Number 68. Using the data in Appendix G, calculate the standard enthalpy change for each of the following reactions. And then we have this reaction in this example. Fe2O3 solid plus 3H2 gas will yield 2Fe solid plus 3H2O liquids. Now I already see that there are coefficients here, so that means that this reaction is already balanced. So we don't have to worry about checking to see if it's balanced. And what I did for you guys is I went into the Appendix G already and I found out the numbers that we're going to be using. Remember, enthalpy is delta H. So anytime that they're asking for an enthalpy change, you have to go get the delta H values, not the G or the S values. I also want to just point out here that just be careful. There are going to be some compounds that have two different states. For example, when, you know, if you look on Appendix G, you'll see H2O liquid, and then there will be another uh, number for H2O gas. Just be careful, you're taking the right one. Okay, now, standard enthalpy change. This is a simple formula. It's this guy right here. I like to sum this up by saying it's just the sum of the products minus the sum of the reactants. This little symbol here just means the sum, aka the addition of. We want to find out the delta H for the whole reaction. Rxn is just short for reaction. So if I want to get the sum of the products and the sum of the reactants, I have to get one number for the left-hand side and one number for the right-hand side. So what we do is we take the numbers that were on the appendix G and we times by how many you have in the balanced equation. So for example, there was only one Fe2O3, so technically I would take this number and times it by one. There was three H2Os, so I would multiply that number by three. There was two irons, so I'll multiply this by two. And then there's three H2Os and I would multiply this by three. Once you do that, you just add the two blues together, you add all of the reactants together, and you add the products together to get one big number. So let's see, what's the sum of the reactant side? It would just be the negative 824.2. And now what's the sum of the product side? It would be three times negative 285.83. So it would be negative 857.49. Now I have one number for the left and the right side, so now I'm ready to do my formula. The sum of the products would be negative 857.49 minus the sum of the reactants, which is a negative 824.2. Remember, keep change change. When you're minusing a negative, it's really a plus, right? So delta H would be whatever that is, negative 857.49 plus 824.2. I just want to make sure I have the right numbers in my calci, and we are good to go. This is negative 33.27, and units for delta H is always kilojoules per mole. So kilojoule per mole. And that's it. So that means that when this reaction happens, you will release, because it's a negative, 33.29 kilojoules per mole. And that's it. Thank you so much for viewing the video. I really hope this helped. Let me know in the comments. Subscribe if you want to help us out. Tell your friends, tell your classmates. We also have physics and math videos at the moment on the channel. So go check it out. All right. See you all later. Bye-bye.